Hey y'all, it's Erin Hines with Gaston Natural Classroom. This video is part two of an investigation of one of Gaston County's most iconic but overlooked landforms, Spencer Mountain. During my last video, we explored around the base of the mountain, we found quartzite, we also found mine ruins, and we learned that the mountain is owned by WVTV, a local broadcasting station in this area. We also learned about the towers that are on top of that mountain. But our visit raised a lot of questions, such as what were the miners looking for, and how did the mountain form? How did it come to be so isolated? Both of these questions can be answered by learning more about the geology. To answer these questions, I turned to local amateur geologist and historian Tim Hefner, who agreed to meet me out at the park. Well, thank you for your time today, Tim. Um, can you tell us about the geology of Spencer Mountain, how it was formed? Uh, you're welcome, Erin, and definitely I will give it a shot. Um, Spencer's Mountain is here today primarily because it's mostly composed of a very hard, weather-resistant rock known as quartzite, such as this piece I have in my hand, which came from right here on the ground. Um, millions of years ago, the area we're standing on and the whole area of North Carolina on the East Coast was covered by an ocean. And um, over the years, as the land around the ocean eroded and filled the ocean with sand and silt, and it built up huge layers of sand, um, it eventually formed into a rock known as uh, sandstone, just due to pressure and whatnot. And then as that sandstone deep in the earth was exposed to high temperatures and even more pressure due to the earth forces moving around, that sandstone will be fused together and compressed and form another rock known as the quartzite we have here. So then millions of years go by, the ocean recedes, goes away and the land that we're on uh, still is composed of sandstone and quartzite and whatnot and then uplifting occurred and this area was raised by hundreds and hundreds of feet hmm. and then for many many more years erosion takes place and starts washing the land back into the creeks and into the rivers and ultimately back to the ocean and uh, you can tell that if you see the surrounding area here from an airplane or a high place, it's relatively flat now because all of that earth has eroded down, except these pockets of very hard stone that are quartzite, like Spencer's Mountain. So it stands in relief from the area around it just because it is eroding at a much slower rate. Is the geologic process for Spencer Mountain and the way it was formed, is it similar to other mountains that we have in this local area? Yeah, definitely. It's pretty much exactly the same as, uh, like for instance, Crowder's Mountain just down the road and mm -hmm. King's Mountain, most people around here are familiar with. Tim explained that Crowder's Mountain, Spencer Mountain, and King's Mountain are all considered Monadnock Mountains. Monadnock is an American Indian word for isolated or lonely mountain. This means they are not part of the Appalachian mountain range, which formed 65 million years ago when two tectonic plates converged, pushing the land up. Next, I asked him about the quarry on top of Spencer Mountain. That particular quarry was uh, basically a prospect pit for a mineral called spodumene. Okay. I think it was around the early 1900s. There were several prospecting pits in this whole region. Uh, because this area around Gaston County, Cleveland County, Lincoln County is very rich, one of the richest places uh, in the world for spodumene. Okay. So it's a very useful mineral. It's used a lot in medicines mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's an ore of lithium. Okay. So lithium was used in medicine. And now there's a huge demand for lithium in batteries. Right. Here's a few pieces of it. This is the green blades in here, this mineral you see is actually spodumene. Okay. And that's what they were after on top of the mountain. They must not have found enough to warrant mining here? No, apparently not because they right. didn't proceed with it anymore. Right. Um, there was actually another mountain which was even taller than Crowder's Mountain, really near it, just on the state line between North Carolina and South Carolina. And it was called Henry's Knob. Hmm. And it was the same as Crowder's Mountain, basically, and it got mined before there were a lot of mining regulations mm -hmm. or environmental concerns mm -hmm. uh, for the kyanite. And it is like 
basically a wasteland. It was wow. the entire mountain was mined down. Wow. And there's a huge pit. And a lot of the iron rocks, ores in there are very acidic, so there's hmm. lots of just pools of very acidic oh, water. Wow. Plant life is very slowly coming back in. Hmm. It's basically an environmental disaster. Wow. Uh, and Crowder's Mountain almost suffered the same fate. Hmm. You know, they wanted to mine it for the same ore, same reason, but I think in the early 70s, uh, people understood, local people in Gaston County, okay, what was going to happen to Crowder's Mountain, which is a beautiful place. People like to go there for recreation. Was going to turn into a wasteland. So there was enough public outcry and protest that it was not allowed to be mined. Right. And in fact, it was turned into the state park it wow. is today and preserved. Truly, there's so much history surrounding this mysterious mountain, and these stories shouldn't be forgotten. I'm personally fascinated by all the geology we learned about from Tim. So here's a simple experiment you can try at home to model the formation of Spitzer Mountain. I love to model geology with food, so this is the formation of a monadna. So I have a brownie, which I cooked ahead of time, flour, which I have in an even layer in my cake, cake tin, and um, my hair dryer. So I'm just going to put the brownie down into the flour, top side down. The brownie represents the harder quartzite, and the flour represents the sandstone rock. So the top maybe different features, the, the surface of the land, so we might even have like a mountain over here. But then of course, over the years, weathering occurs. This is going to be wind erosion. I'm just going to put it on low because um, I haven't tried this, so I'm not really sure how it's going to